Well, if you were watching us last night, you would have seen these live pictures of a rocket launching from Cape Canaveral in Florida. This NASA-backed mission by tech company Astrobotic is the first US moon landing attempt in more than 50 years. And if it's successful, it'd make history as the first private business to land on the moon. They're privatising everything these days. Joining me now is ANU astrophysicist and cosmologist Brad Tucker. Brad, thank you for your time. Firstly, yep. talk us through the aim of this mission. Yep. It's the first time in a long time they've tried to go near the moon. What do they want to do? Yeah, so this is part of NASA's uh, commercial launch payload service. And, and the idea is that as NASA goes back to the moon as part of its broader Artemis missions, the actually sending of people, there's a lot of experiments and cargo and equipment that needs to go up with it. And in fact, that is should be relatively straightforward. So they've been working and supporting a number of private companies to make it cheaper and more effective to do this. And it is a lot cheaper and it is a lot more effective. There's multiple companies that are doing this. Uh, so there's not just one egg in, you know, in one basket. Uh, and therefore really paving a, an easy way, hopefully in the future of sending lots of things, research equipment, some stranger things that we just saw and we'll probably talk about in a second as well, uh, to the moon. So it's part of this larger umbrella um, and really the first step in getting humans more semi-permanently on the moon. I mean, why would you want to live on the moon? Stupid question, but why on earth would you want to live on the moon? I mean, I know we've been talking about Mars, but the moon? Unless, so, unless it's like that episode of uh, Wallace and Gromit where they go out there and eat cheese and crackers, but come on. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Well, someone has to send all those crackers ahead of time, right? No, um, the, the idea <laughs> is that the, the moon is going to be that stepping stone to Mars. So it's, rather, it's it, less of an individual person on the moon, but rather having astronauts there on a semi-regular rotation basis, kind of a fly-in, fly-out type thing, running experiments, running equipment, and building the facilities and setting up the facilities to actually go to Mars. So the moon is really a, a stepping stone, as everyone view, to Mars. It has a lot of resources we can use, in particular water. Uh, ice contained on the moon in the form of water can be used for, for water for drinking, but you can break up that H2 into hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, in fact, that's rocket fuel. So there's a lot of reasons for the forward thinking to establish ourselves on the moon. Um, and so part of this is this semi-permanent presence of distant astronauts. And to do so, they need the equipment and research to be there um, in part ahead of time, not just on the rocket they take themselves. Well, maybe if they put a resort up there, I'd consider it for a holiday because it'd be a good way to get away from some people you don't want to see for a little while. But <laughs> there's reports that the lunar lander yeah. suffered some technical problems a few hours after liftoff. Is there a chance that maybe it won't make it at all? Yeah, so, you know, and, for, and firstly, as you, as you said, you were showing the, the rocket launch itself. And in fact, the Vulcan rocket was actually a new rocket system by United Launch Alliance. So in fact, there was two big milestones here and the rocket worked perfectly, put that spacecraft into orbit. Now, essentially, they do a very elliptical orbit that they slowly push out further and further and head to the moon. After a few hours of going around the Earth, they realize they, the propellant and the propulsion system wasn't allowing them to orientate the spacecraft such that it could face the sun so that the solar panels can charge the batteries. And that was really the first sign that they had. After a while, they realized there, there was a fault in the propulsion system and it caused it some sort of fuel leak. Where it stands now is it, it, the batteries have charged. They have at least gotten the spacecraft to get the solar panels to work. It, it seems unlikely they will be able to have enough fuel and enough control of the propulsion system to do a soft landing, i.e. nicely controlled on the moon's surface. So we'll learn in a few hours now um, whether they decide, can they go to the moon at all? Because if they can go to the moon at least, they can probably enter the moon's orbit and some of those experiments on board can still achieve their goals, not all of them. Um, and even though they may not be able to land, still accomplish something. So that's probably what they're gonna be aiming for now. Of course, they can get to the moon and do what we call a hard landing, which is a very polite way of saying crash. Um, that doesn't achieve that much, so we'll probably see some of this intermediary option come to play. Uh, but again, we'll know a little bit more in about six or so hours from now. And I mean, the stuff they've got on it too. I mean, apparently there's a piece of rock from Mount Everest. There's DNA from former president. They've got human remains from the creator of Star Trek. They've got artworks. I mean, 
They're going to be well set up on the moon, that's for sure. Brad Tucker, thank you so much for your time.